right, so after finals and after a lot of personal stuff, it's been crazy. Now I'm back, I'm ready to make more videos, and I'm coming back with Days of Future Past. Here we go. So, X-Men in the Future Past is directed by Brian Singer, and this movie's fantastic. Really, I mean, I was gonna say that straight up, and this movie's really, really great. It is one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. And it was my first X-Men movie. <laughs> now, I know for some people that's that's not good. But, I mean, I grew up with the 90s X-Men TV show. And I loved that show. And I was like, oh, this is fantastic. I love Wolverine. I love Cyclops. I love Storm. I love all these characters. But I never got into the movies. The movies came out when I was like three years old. So I didn't really see them or connect with them at all. Um, Granted, it's a Spider-Man, but I, I, my parents never took me to the X-Men. They were like, oh, Spider-Man, you like Spider-Man, let's go see Spider-Man. But no X-Men. And really, as this being my first X-Men movie, I was pleasantly surprised. Really, I mean, this movie came out a month, um, two months after Captain America the Winter Soldier. And to me, walking out of that movie, I was like, this is the best Marvel movie ever made. Even better than the Avengers. Now, while I have gone back on that because I just prefer to watch the Avengers over the Winter Soldier, the Winter Soldier was a fantastic movie. And this movie, to my head, had to live up to what the Winter Soldier did earlier. It's like, okay, so you have a movie like the Winter Soldier, then you have a movie like Sp My Amazing Spider-Man 2, and then you have this movie. And this movie managed to shine on its own. I mean, it had some amazing characters. It had Quicksilver, which had the best standalone scene in the entire movie. By far. And then you had Magneto, which had that amazing scene carrying the freaking stadium up, which was amazing. And he had so much character and so much good chemistry with uh, James McAvoy's Professor X Xavier. And it was just so great, like seeing all these both guys, you know, fighting over these ideas and uh, some of the things that happened in first class, which I mean, I still haven't seen, but I mean, I do understand what's going on. Like, they're in conflict with each other, but at the very end, they just want what's better for mutants. And But they have different ideas of that. Then you got Wolverine and Mystique. Oh my gosh, um, I really like Mystique. Um, I, I like what she's doing. I, I, I understand what... I like that she's been using the MacGuffin of this entire movie. Where like, you need her, because she's the key to either the end of the world or to save the world. You might want to have her on your side, depending on what you want. I don't know. And it was fantastic. And then you got Wolverine, which stole the entire movie. He did everything on his own. He, like, I didn't expect Wolverine to be the main player in this movie. And I was very surprised because I love Wolverine. I mean, I have seen the Wolverine movies. And the first one was shit. And the second one was pretty good. All right. And then... Wolverine here is like awesome. It's like, yeah, this is what I want from Wolverine. This is amazing. It's so cool to see all these characters together. And the time travel here was done perfectly. I mean, you got both sides, you know, the future and the past, and they both work. They both work really, really well. I mean, I couldn't believe that they could make the world of, you know, the past X Men movies blend so well with the newer ones and it just works so well in tandem and like you know going back and forth between time periods and see how the future they're trying to defend themselves like the sentinels and how in the past they're trying to defend themselves from getting those sentinels i just think it's just a very cool parallels between both stories and it just works so well now there's also some bad things in this movie and i, I will admit some of those side x-men some of the side characters like, for example, a storm or beast, they didn't have time to shine. We only had time to shine on Mystique, on Professor Xavier, Magneto, and Wolverine. That's it. Those are the only players that actually got to shine in this movie. Jakob Silver got a nice standout scene, but it wasn't him stealing the movie. It, it was just... I, I feel like you have a group movie with a lot of these powerful people and characters are amazing on their own why not put them all together like have actually more scenes with these characters because at the very end it's a group 
movie. The X-Men are a group, and the group works together perfectly. I just would like to see more of that supporting cast being less supporting and more active in their roles. And at the end, uh, the ending had some loose ends. As much as I love the ending, and I love how it ended, uh, the movie had some loose ends. You know, Wolverine and some of the other things. Um, what really happened once everything got fixed and once he goes back to the future. Um, something there is not totally explained and it has to. I just, one of those things like, you know, I just wish I knew a little more what happened. Maybe Paul is going to fix it, but I don't know. And, you know, really, I mean, this movie, as much as these things kind of bother me a little bit, I think this movie is just great. It's fantastic. And I would give this movie a rating of amazing. Why? Because it's just, it's just great. Um, I just really love this movie. And to shine alongside The Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy on the same year means that you got to be damn good. Because <laughs> I love those other two movies. And the X-Men, you guys did it. Then Deadpool's going to come out and make sure you guys are still on track. Thanks for watching. My next video is going to be on X-Men Apocalypse. Hopefully it doesn't suck. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, don't forget to like, comment, to subscribe. If you want to see more, click right here.